levels. Here we will be looking at using floor plans, making new levels, elevation views and level properties. Walls. Here we will be looking at placing walls, editing wall properties, creating openings, joining walls and materials. Doors and windows. Here we will be looking at adding doors and windows, properties and editing their profile. Okay, welcome to lesson two. Let's uh, have a look at the sample model in a bit more detail. So every Revit model is built around levels. This sample model has several levels defining, for example, the ground level, the level of the first floor and the roof level. So let's have a look at the levels associated with this model. So to view levels, we need to be in elevation view. So let's go into north elevation by clicking north under elevations in the project browser. So here is the north face of our building. To view levels, click on edit over in the uh, properties window under visibility graphics here. Okay, this brings up the visibility graphics window. Also, another way to uh, bring up the visibility graphics window is by pressing VG on your keyboard. It's a shortcut key to bring it up. So, anyways, um, let's we need to click on the tower annotation categories tab up at the top here, and we need to scroll down to levels. So here it is. We need to tick levels, and then we need to click OK. So these horizontal lines represent the levels that have been defined for this building. So let's have a closer look at them. Uh, so scroll over to the levels and zoom in closer. You can see some levels icons are blue and others are black. The blue icons represent levels that have an associated floor plan. There are two ways to view a floor plan associated with a level. So if I double click on level 1, you'll be taken to its corresponding floor plan. So, level 1. Okay, so to view all the windows you have open, I'm going to uh, make it so it's Windows Tile. So if I go over to the View tab in the ribbon, I can click Switch Windows and it'll show me up all my windows I have open so I can change to one I want. But a shortcut way is by pressing WT and it'll bring up all the windows I had recently opened or have opened. So we need to be in elevation view. So let's go over to north elevation. If I double click the window, it'll bring me to the north elevation. So, but look, I can't see the building. So a good way to get to extend your view is by pressing uh, on your short on your keyboard is a shortcut key by pressing Z and E and it will bring me back to this uh, extent view also another way of doing that is if so if I just scroll in is by coming over to the navigation bar to the right I can go to zoom in region and I can do zoom all to fit and it will bring me the extent view again so now let's uh, let's zoom back into the levels uh, so first of all, I'm going to modify the height of level 3. So to do this, I need to click the level line to highlight it, and then click on the height parameter. A new editor box appears here. This is the height parameter, this is the elevation. Okay, so if I change the level 3 to 6000, You will notice all the features associated with this level has been changed. So if I change it back to 6400, you will see this window here to the left will go back up because it is it's associated with that level. Okay, so now we're going to add a new level. 
So if you go up to the ribbon here at the top, we'll go over to Architect and then scroll across to Level. Click on the Level tool and you should have a cross cursor in the middle of your screen. So if I go to the end and drag all the way over here, it will create me a new level. So I want to change this to 5000. Now it's changed the elevation to that level is changed to 5000. Okay, so now we're going to make a building. So we're going to be placing walls and doors and windows. So if you'd like to go to new over in the projects here, create a new Revit project file. You click OK. And here is our new uh, Revit file, project file. So, so to start we are going to add levels. So we need to be in the elevation view. So if we go to elevations in the project browser and click east. As you can see by default you can see the level 1 is level 0. So we're going to add another level. So if you go to level here over in architecture tab on the ribbon click the level tool and as you can see this highlighted line which keeps it in line uh, go to 4000 millimeters such as 4 meters and bring it across to this other highlighted line and then there's my second level so we want to rename these to so this one we need to rename to ground level and then click yes first floor second floor yes also another way of uh, renaming your levels is by over in the project browser to the right you can see under floor plans you have the levels here so if I click on first floor and right click you can see the other options you can do so I can click on rename here and I can rename it to whatever so um, I could rename it to third floor and here's changed the third floor but it's not the third floor so we need to change it back to the first floor Okay, so that's uh, renaming and we've added uh, our levels. So now we're going to move on to actually creating our building. So we need to be in the f ground level. So we've gone to ground level and we're going to add walls. So if you go over to the tool, wall tool in our, under architecture, you will be given, it has selected the basic wall cavity uh, this is selected by default so we want to we want to place a wall which goes up to what well, the constraint we want it to connect go through first floor just to, to the top second okay so you want to go through first floor to the second also you can do that up here by clicking ground floor or second so yeah anyways now so now we are going to create our walls. So um, if I can just drag a wall here, I can make it to 15,000 millimeters, or I can just type in 15,000 millimeters. So you can drag to how long you want it, or you can type in by just pressing uh, a number key on the keyboard, and it will start. It will bring up the editable box. So I want it 15,000 millimeters, and there you go. I would like this one 10 so I can change this to 10 like that and by clicking or I can type it in um, now I don't have to do that because as I bring my wall across it will bring up 15,000 meters because it is trying to line it up with the wall opposite so that's good it's easier so you can just do that and then you've created your simple walls so this is my simple building at the minute if I go to 3D view, this is my building. Okay. 
If I don't want the walls to go to second floor, I can change them to go to first floor, such as using the top constraints again. So, uh, if you press WT to open window tile, it'll bring up all my thingy, all my windows I have open. So, I press WE on this, click on this one, press WE, press WE, it'll bring it, extend the view. So, I want to change, let's wear the front wall. I want to change this wall to go to the first floor. I don't want it to go to the second. So, I can click here, and the properties palette to your left, I can click first floor. And it's changing it down to the first floor. But we don't want that, we want to change it back to the second floor. So I'm going to change it back to second floor, and it's done that. So, what if I don't want them to be basic wall cavity? I can change the type of wall it is over in the type selector on the properties palette. So we want to be into the floor plan. Double click on the floor plan window, press ZE to get to an extent view. Okay, so... I'm going to click on this wall here. I don't want it to be basic wall cavity. Let's change this one to. Let's change it to just brick. So, as you can see, the difference now. This one's wall cavity. You can see the cavity in and the basic wall. This is just a basic wall. You can see the difference here. But we don't want it basic wall, so we're going to change that back. Press undo over in the quick access toolbar at the top, or press control Z and it will bring you back, give you the, it will undo your recent action. So it's giving me back the basic wall cavity. So, now, um, if you look on, press WT for Windows Tile again, if you look at your building, you can see there's white inside the cavity and then the brick on the outside. What if, uh, so if your wall does happen to be the white on the outside, so if I click onto this, wall here and I press this little arrow here it'll change the orientation of the wall so it'll change the white side to the outside but we don't want that it's just in case you happen to have done something and it would have changed the wall that way changed the orientation so let's change that back that's how it should look so to view your cube to view your building you can so just go around it in your 3d view you could press shift and you right and right click on your mouse to rotate around your building also you can use the view cube up in the top right so I can click on the top to view the top or the corner stuff like that north facing or I can just drag it and hold and drag and it will pivot around so that's another good great tool you can use so, also you can use the, also in the navigation bar, you can use the navigation wheel, which is very useful. You can do zoom, um, orbit around, so you pivot in again, pivot in again. you can pan. It's good if you, uh, you can do center, stuff like that. You can do all sorts. So, let's close that off and go back to the extent view. Okay, so we're going to extend this building. We're going to add another extension and create openings and join some more walls, stuff like that. So let's go to the fair ground floor plan. ZE to extend the view so I can see properly. So, let's add an extension here. Uh, if you go to, go to wall, uh, basic, yeah, let's pick the basic wall cavity, the same as that one. Okay, so we're going to add an extension here. Let's do it about 3,200. Drag it to 6,500, across down to, it's, so it's lined, in line with the highlight line, it's good enough. And then to the corner. So now we've added our own little extension. Now, we can't get into this extension, so we need to uh, edit this wall. So we need to make it, create the opening. There is one way you can uh drag the wall to the end, so drag it to the middle there and it will create the opening just press undo, another way is if you want that wall there you could add a door, stuff like that or you could use edit profile, so edit profile will change this wall, change the shape of the wall so a, a way to do that is if you go into elevation view 
Okay, well, let's select this wall. Click Edit Profile in East Elevation. There you go. Now it's bring up the elevator. It's the view. So we're facing that wall, so we can see it. Okay, so we're gonna edit the profile. So we need to make an opening in this wall, but. As you can see, this is the full wall. We don't want to create an opening in the full wall. As you can see, this line here is the ex part of the extension we made. So we need to make an opening here. So if I grab the square here, I'm going to do it about here and make an opening. Just ignore the warning message to your right. Delete this line at the bottom, which is part of the square. Now we need when we've got a bottom line here. I'm going to split that line using the split tool up in the ribbon. Okay, I've clicked the split to, and I'm going to split it about, it doesn't matter where you split it, it's just about there, summit. and then drag it to attach to the ends. So now there is an opening there. So I'm going to press the green tick, and it will finish my opening. So if I go to 3D view now, you will see there is an opening there. Instead of putting a door there or anything, you could do archways to fight that to get through. So... So now we're going to add some doors and windows. Now we've added our stick extension on. So let's go to door here. Let's add a door to the front. Right. Um, to get more choice of doors and the type selector in that, you can load a family. You can download different Revit families on the internet. You can look for different sites. Uh, Revit Seek is a good one. Revit uh, City is another one. You can get uh, free Revit families. Uh, for your Revit models. So let's just use the sample one you sample one you get with Revit. So we're going to pick the sing. Actually, we're going to pick the double flush star, and we're going to place it here in the extension. So uh, the black icon of the door, the outline, shows that the doors are swinging outwards. So I want the doors swinging inwards. So I will put my cursor to the right. If I put it to the left, they'll swing outwards, swing inwards. So, I've placed the wall. Also, to change the orientation of it, I can press this, so it will flip the facing side. So, I want it that way. Okay, so, there's my door. If I go back to the 3D view, you will see my door there. It seems a bit big on that wall, but this is the second floor. That's the first floor, ground floor. And then you got the first floor and second floor. So we need to go to the ground floor again. And we need to add some more doors and windows. So let's add another window. We've got a door there. Let's add a window. These are the sample windows you get with Revit. So we'll use these also. You can load families again, like I said. So we're going to use a sample window. Let's add a window there. A window there, a window there, and then a window there, a window there, and a window there. So I've added windows to my house, my building, as you can see. So now we want to add another door at the back. So let's go to the ground floor again and add door. Let's add a single door this time. Okay, so I'm going to single door and I'm going to put it over in the back here. Let's swing inward, outwards. Okay, and then again I can use the arrow to change it again. So I can change it to face the other way, flipping it or place it so it comes inwards. But we want it facing outwards. Okay, so now we're going to if we click on a window here, we can see the properties palette. I might want to change the level of this window. So if I click second floor, it will change it to... Sorry. If I change it to first floor, it will change the window up to the first floor, as you can see. Or I want it back on the ground floor. So there we go. Uh, also, I can change... I can edit the types. So I can change the... Width for the window, stuff like that. So if I zoom in here, you can see the window there. I'm going to edit type in the properties palette here, and I'm going to go to the width. If I just passed it, 
Okay, there it is, the width. Let's change that to 700. Apply. As you can see, the windows, all the windows have got bigger. Because it's every. if you edit one window, it will change them all. So, let's change that back to 6. Let's change that back. If I press Z, SHL Z, it will undo. And there you go, it's undone the windows back to normal. So yeah, as you can see the difference, if I change the width, it's changed the width, and I can undo and redo, and you can see the difference. Okay. Okay, also, if I want to change the, like, on the window ledge here, you can see if I want to edit the family, I can go to Edit Family up in the top here, click on the window, Edit Family, and I can change some stuff about it. I can change the shape, stuff like that. So I want to make this ledge much bigger. So the extrusion, I want to change the extrusion. Let's click Edit Extrusion, click on the window ledge, and you bring up this. So I want to make it wider. Sorry, longer. So I'm going to click on the end, and I'm going to use the left arrow key and press remove constraints sorry and I'm going to press the left arrow key until I think I think it's long enough you could also type in a, a sum what you want by clicking on that and changing it but I don't want to and I think that's long enough for me so I'm going to put the green tick as you can see it's to made the ledge much bigger so now I've done that I can click out of it I want to save yes hold on so now I'm going to save the file as anything I can so window remake it will save it as a Revit family okay so now we're going to add floors and roofs so go over to your ground floor plan as you can see we need to add a floor so if you go to architect tab and go along the ribbon to floor click on the tool and if you can see here, you can see the draw box. Uh, click on the pick lines tool there. It's a arrow with a green stripe. Okay, what you need to do is you need to click on the middle of each wall, as you can see here. It will bring up a highlighted line for what you need to click on. Okay, so now we've attached all the uh, floors. So, as you can see here, we've got a gap. So we need to drag this line to here, so then it creates an opening, so then there is, so it can cover the full floor of the building. Click the green tick. Okay, as you can see, there was a problem here. Over in the top right, they are connected. So what you want to do is just drag and connect it with the uh, pink square and it's all connected so click the green tick and there you go you have your floor so if we go to the 3d view now as you can see you have a floor here if we look inside from the above you can see the floor there so now we need to add a floor on the second on the first floor so if you click on the first floor plan it's the same again same process click floor Click the pick uh, pick lines tool and click the middle of each wall. Okay, so now we've done that. We need to check in this top right corner again, see if they're attached. Now they're attached, and now we need to make an opening here. And now we have. So now they're all connected, and if I click the green tick. Now it has created another floor. As you can see, there is the second, the first floor for the building. Okay, so now we need to add the roof. So if we go over to the second floor plan, you can see here it's not very, it's a bit rough. But now we need to click on the roof tool up at the top left and click the pick lines tool. And then what you want to do now is click on the outside of the walls, not the middle or the inside. Make sure it's the outside. Okay. 
and that's done make sure you check all the side of the lines make sure they're all oh you could do this so you can make the opening again you need to check all the sides make sure they're all connected and then click the green tick and you should have a perfectly shaped roof as you can see okay we we'll have to change this wall as you can see here I've made a mistake we need to change this wall here so let's go to the ground floor plan and we'll change this wall or orientation around as you can see I fixed that so now we need to if you want to you can change the roof so what you click click on it and go to the properties palette to the left and go in the type selector you could change it to one country con concrete uh, sloped glazing timber stuff like that or you could choose it's like generic so let's choose a different one let's pick concrete as you can see it's changed or we could choose the generic but I won't pick them because they're a bit ugly so I would pick the industrial